the gym just about all the time. For me, it's like it's the, my most favourite part of training, the best, best bit ever. Okay? Just one thing I just uh, wanted to share with you as well is that um, I've, had loads, I've had people before come to me and say, Oh, how do you pass spider guard? How do you pass a butterfly guard? How do you pass this? How do you pass that? Right? And what, what I try to explain to people is if you can kind of make, make the person kind of play your game, rather than you playing their game, like if I know somebody's got a good spider guard, I'm not going to try and sort of pass that spider guard. I'm going to try and get back to a position that I want to start passing from. Okay, I don't know if that makes sense. I just apologize. No, just on your back, mate. Play some guard, just nail me with something. I'll say straight away from here. If I'm starting to try and sort of pass this, yeah, this is kind of the, this is his choice. This is what he wants. Yeah. So from here, straight away, he's playing some spider guard, and it's not really what I want to pass. Okay. So I might just stuff this leg. Yeah. So now he's only got one leg. Just keep playing. So he's only got the one leg here. So now I'll start wrapping this. So now suddenly I've taken away what he wanted in favour of what I wanted. I don't want to pass his spider guard because that's what he prefers. I'm going to get nailed. The <coughs> same words again, just play, play some guard, mate, whatever. Ah oh, man, I hate this. Okay, but again from here, if I start thinking, oh I know how to pass this, I go round here and I do this and I do that, and he just goes, right, touch your leg, sweep, and I'm done. Because it, obviously he knows what he's doing. I might not even know what he's trying to do. So from here, I'm not just going to sort of go on blindly, trying to sort of just pass around something. I want to have a strategy again where I'm starting to trap something off. I'm starting to trap something off. I'm trapping something off here. I start breaking his grip. So already, I'm putting myself into a position where I'm looking to pass guard from either one or two positions, okay? I like this, where I sit on his leg. Either arm out or arm under, I really don't care. I like passing from here, yeah? And I also like passing from here. This is all down to what I was saying earlier, about passing one leg at a time. If I don't get to one of those three positions, I don't want to pass, okay? I stay safe and I keep trying to get him into a position where I can get him back to where I want to pass from. Now again, for me, this made a lot of difference like, to my game, okay? So, um, I mentioned earlier about the inverted guard, right? Tony just like spins to invert, as I'm here, he inverts this way. If I start thinking, shit, what do I do against this? Yeah? Then, I might kind of find myself stuck. Oh, I don't even know what he's doing. I don't even know what this is. Okay, tell you what, let's put him back to a position that I know. So let me start sort of working back to here, trapping off this hook and getting back to here. Now I'm back to one of the positions that I like passing from. Don't let him dictate to me what position I'm going to pass from. Does that make sense? I hope it does, it's really important. Okay, and again, I spent so much time, um, just before I went to South Africa with Howard, I spent so much time doing nothing but catching a hook. The guy's playing guard with me, okay, I'm moving around, whatever it may be, turn this out, I want that Dylan Heaver, catch his leg, I've caught this hook, that's all I want. And I sort of step off it again. I've captured his hook, and that's all I want. So now that when I get to here, I can pass. All I wanted to do, we get to a position, one of those three positions, when I know I can pass. Again, somebody who's got a good guard, you have to try and make them play your game, not you play their game. And I hope I've, I've sort of um, explained that because that really is a good point. Okay? Right, so I, where I push James's legs into him, yeah? I pull him away and I step right around. Yeah? Learned that and thought, man, that's awesome. Tried it, never worked. Okay? That's why, that's when I kind of were trying to pass legs and hips and get control and everything all at the same time. And against guys that know what they're doing, it's really difficult, okay? If I try anything like that at all, I just try and sort of pull his legs around here. And as I'm sort of coming round, he's already setting his next guard up, he's hipping out, he's putting his leg across. 
So it's really difficult for me to actually sort of pass everything all in one go. Okay, so again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to fake something, I'm going to fake a pass, so it's going to give me a little bit of something else. Okay, so, but, um, like this. So basically from here, instead of sort of in both legs this way, I'm going to switch grip. And all I'm going to do, I'm just going to push both hands onto his leg here to start to pass this way. So I'm going to pull this through. As soon as I pull this through, most people will start to spin this foot over onto the other hip. So now I'm stuck. Okay? So either he does this, retrieves his bottom leg, gets his guard back, or he goes to totally invert and spin all the way around like he just did there. And I put myself in a worse position. Okay? So what I'm going to look to do from here, I'm going to use this. I'm going to step through here, and as I pull this back, as it goes over, I'm going to use this leg to force the other leg. Right? And especially if he goes to invert, all I'm going to do quickly, I'm going to take my outside leg, and I'm going to drop it against the back of his leg there. It goes to completely invert, and he's stuck. If this leg's stuck, I've got some grip here. Okay? If I find that I'm kind of losing it a bit, and what totally sort of stops people from going to invert, is by me controlling his head. Although I've got to be careful putting this arm in. If I feel like I'm losing this position a little bit, I dig my arm in here already, it goes to completely invert, and it's difficult. Yeah? So what I do, I'm making sure I've got pressure down on his hips, pressure down on his leg, I rewind my hips here, the arm's already facing away, which is what I want, so I start working around. Okay? From here you've got like your arm triangle sort of thing. Yeah? Or I just use this to cinch my seatbelt in again, then I start sitting him up and start attacking. Helen used to use this inverted guard thing on me all the time. Until I kind of realised that if you stop the head, you stop everything else. Yeah? So any time anybody's like wants to try and do something from guard, I've noticed that if you control the head or you control the hips, depending on what it is they're trying to do, you can stop an awful lot of stuff. Okay? So we've worked to the guard play, I've like been doing all day. I've stepped back, I've got into here, I reach across for the pass, I pull this through, the straight away goes to defend it. I'm just going to use this, use this simply to throw his legs across. I'm going to drive this knee straight in before he can do anything else. Again, this hand this time, because I haven't got a good grip of his knee to start with, I'm just going to drop the elbow inside. So again, it's just trapping off his thigh when I get into a position here. If this arm's in the way, then we can start to arm, to, to arm lock him, or I can start to just like sort of shuck it over my head, as I start to come down here. Again, hands inside, start to set up my seatbelt position already, and I'm good to go. Okay? If you're just wondering about sort of having the seatbelt position here, about having no sort of leg control or whatever, upper body control first all the time, and then worry about his legs. Okay, because if I'm here and he's just concerned about his legs, I might be able to just immediately go to choking. Now what I said earlier, if I've got this, but no hooks, can I finish him? Yeah, but your ass I can finish him. That's not his neck. Yeah, doesn't matter if I'm trying to sort of reach down to put a hook inside here, I've got his neck. Okay, so that's the thing. So straight away as I turn to here with the seatbelt position, yeah, I'm looking for this upper body control. Because James is just going to go somewhere now. I don't know what he's going to do. We've never met before. Okay, just go somewhere. I just keep my control. It keeps going where he's going.
So it's just, again, just this, um, this position here. I've broke guard. I've stood up. Yeah, I've kind of switched my grip. I bring this through. I use this just to stuff across. So you can't bring that in there. I'm going to drop my knee straight inside. There is sometimes the option to put the other knee inside. I'm not going to stay to start working through this kind of side today, but there is this option as well from here. When I start going this way, you start going this way, and ducking this, so you just sort of straight out until now. But I'll just show you that for now, we can cover that some other time. It's basically from here, as I push this across, again I'm just going to rewind the hip position here, straight down into here. Start reaching around, get rid of the arm, or keep the arm, I don't mind whichever one. Just going to smack past this here. Straight to my sit block position, and then from there it's up to me and whatever. Does that make sense? Pull one leg in. Wait for the guy to react. As he reacts, use the one leg you've got to deflect the other one that's coming in. Get your hips down straight away, block it off, and then there's your path to the back again. Okay? So. Again, stolen totally from my solo gas here, which is why I've got this, this break as well from here. It's um, a funny story, but me and Helen went to New York over New Year's, right? Scheduled to go to Marcelo's, absolutely awesome. Turned up, got there, closed. Bank holiday. All that way, got outside and it shut, everything locked up. Gutted. Anyway, just let me share, just let me share, my, share my pain. But anyway, I still quite like his grappling, even though I don't like his fan <coughs> colours. Okay? So basically, we're into here. So I get into my stand, I get used to this, get used to this, pop this off here, everything back here, right at the same time. Yeah? I take my weight out, and quite simply, what this is now, like I say, it's what you call this circling pass. So what I do from here is just basically walk around to the side. As I get to the side, this hand, I'm just going to stuff that leg out of the way and I'm going to switch my hips. Again, usually it's quite a heavy like, sort of land on your partner, but um, I'll soft it down a bit, obviously. So I'm going into here. So I walk around as I get to here. I'm just literally pushing this out of the way a little bit because I'm driving this way. Okay? So I'm dropping my weight onto my partner. Notice I'm being kind, I've folded this leg underneath so I'm not driving my pressure in. What I'm going to do from here, I'm going to lift the hips up. And I put my knee actually right underneath the hips. Really stops them from moving. Okay. Now you'll feel like kind of a little bit compromised in this position, but all I'm going to do, I'm going to drop my elbow to the opposite side. I'm going to lift it up as high as I can. And I'm going to start walking right up so I'm putting control like on the neck and on the jaw rather than on the chest. Okay, I'll show you in a second why. When I get to here. And from here then, I can start working up to north-south, or I can start switching round to work like my fat man choke position, yeah, or I can start switching to regular side control if I want to. You've got a lot of options, okay? It's just getting there. That's the important bit. Like I said, I've seen this, uh, I've seen myself using this in competition. It just looks like, it looks like it's too simple. But again, this is something I use like on a weekly basis. Get to here, get used to standing. One other point, actually, when I'm here, about making some extra pressure. You know, it's when I'm here, I'm sat here, like with my feet flat to the floor. This is this is good, like sort of solid posture. This is good for my base and my balance. When I want to start making pressure, and when I want to start being able to stand up, I come onto the balls of my feet. Okay, so already there's more pressure, but. I have to try and just sort of change my body a little bit. Because from here, if I keep everything straight, and I go up onto the balls of my feet, then I start leaning forward. And this is what a lot of people do to start with. Like I said earlier, like I demonstrated with James earlier, if I put my neck anywhere near anybody experienced, there's a loop choke waiting for me, or a collar choke, or whatever it may be. Okay? So as I pop to my feet here, I have to make sure that I've still got some posture. But simply because, the position of my legs now is actually driving some pressure into our partner. You can try it. You can actually see. I sit here like this. Yeah? Fairly comfortable. You know, we're both in a sort of a fairly neutral state here. As soon as I do this, 
Straight away they're getting more pressure. Okay? So break. Standing. Keep this leg away. Hip up and lift. Okay? Reach back. Pop the foot. Don't need to go too deep. So don't need to go dropping down here like I said before. This is okay to start with. Everything around here. And then I can change my position of the leg if I want to. All I do from here, I make that hook position I mentioned earlier. And I start to walk around. As I walk around, I'm just like dropping my left shoulder in. As I slightly push this leg away. Here. Come straight in. Lift. Get my knee underneath the butt. Get this arm through. Start working it up. So all I'm doing from here, I'm pushing against the legs. And I'm walking my hips right back. So I'm in this position here. Okay, for an MMA position, yeah, pretty good. You can start sort of hitting the body and stuff like that as long as you're just watching the legs coming in. For a jiu-jitsu position, again, I've got options. I can start to just sort of go face down regular side control. I can continue walking to north-south, which is my favorite. Yeah, and if you want, I can start working mount. Okay, so you're basically doing the same break we did earlier, keeping that pressure on the legs, and you're just walking around to the side. As soon as you get to the side, you're pushing the leg out of the way slightly, and you're dropping your shoulder right in. Okay, I'll just show you where I'm going to this big thing. I'm at the moment, eh? If I demonstrate this correctly, it says you're going to give me all this gold medals from last year. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. If I'm looking to try and control a big guy like this, right? Like sort of with a regular side control, so I can get to here, get me off, just bench me off, whatever you want. See that? There's no way I'm holding him, right? I'll proper try and hold him down. And all he's going to do is just throw me off on what he wants. That no. <laughs> Get in at it, okay? That's because I'm trying to sort of go back, I'm trying to go back traditional control. When I'm trying to sort of control his chest or keep chest to chest control here, and for me, against someone this size, it's not happening. Okay? So when I'm hit like this, this position here, as I start sort of circling this arm right up and getting my hips right up this way, right, I lock down, hopefully now. He's not going to be able to get me off as easy. Can't leave And then even better, when I switch now to north-south, he goes to get me off. Got a be be much better chance of riding the bull. Okay? Simply because, if he goes to, if he goes to bridge his hips, just do a bridge. See what moves? All this moves. You see what doesn't move? This. Okay? So literally, if I go here and he just bridges, I end up in the car park. If I go here and he just bridges, I've got control. That's why it's important when I pass guard and I've got into here to walk up really nice and happy. Even right round to north south if I want to. And I've got to wait right back. Okay? So this is where. This reverse stepping really works well. If the guy's really good with his guard and he's flexible, one of those guys that starts throwing the legs up and over the head to get on your back, throw your legs up. I'm going to stick my head in. Stops him coming over. Okay? Feels like I've just got that whiplash, but at least he hasn't got points. Yeah? So anytime I need to, I lose my head. Stop him moving. Okay? Right, so with your partner, break. Push the hand down, circle, push the leg slightly, drop your shoulder in. So you're actually sitting like facing the feet. You get like typical sort of mass low position for passive. Walk your hips right up to the top. Get yourself a good tight position and then switch. Okay? Give it a go. My, my old buddy in the States, um, Tony, sensibly he puts Tony. <laughs> my Carlson Revolution team calls this his power position. And I think you can see why. You know, because from here, I've got such good control, okay?
So like so a lot of this stuff I got from like from watching Tony, the sort of rewinding the hips and that over there. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch um, to something to something different, okay? I'm trying to sort of move Lee's leg over my head and he's basically playing what we call a heavy leg. That's it, he's pushing down here, he's lifting his hip up off the floor, so it makes it difficult for me to move this. So what I'm gonna do from here, I'm gonna take my leg out, and I'm gonna as I do that, you see, he's lifted his hips off the floor. So I take my leg out and I'm going to switch to a double underpass. So from here, I just reach straight underneath and I grab here. Now what I see with this double underpass, where a lot of people make mistakes, is to try and do it from here. Right? The guy's got entirely too much control, his hips are up, he can move. So as soon as I do this, I'm going to jump both my knees under his back. So straight away, he's into this position where he's a lot less mobile. Okay? I'll try not to keep you here too long, but I've got a bit of a speech at this point. Um, again, another one, another one of my, my old buddies, um, Matt, he started doing um, like a survey, I think from Mundial in 2004, on what guard passes actually were used, what was successful. He says that nobody used this pass at all. So that's either because the people weren't able to do it right, they couldn't apply it correctly, or simply because the guy underneath were playing guard too well, you couldn't actually pull this off, okay? So what I decided to do, I decided to kind of use this position to threaten the guy, and I'm going to give him a little bit of space to escape it, and then I'm going to start to sort of get my pass off this, so I'm kind of like setting him up for it, okay? So I'm going to go through it. I'm going to get to that position. I'm going to sort of take the pressure off a little bit. My partner's going to react to it, and I'm just going to pass from there, okay? If you watch um, like kind of Man of the Moment, if you watch like um, Adolfo Vieira with his kind of pressure and release style, it gives the guy so much pressure, and as soon as he releases the pressure a little bit, it gives him some, some, some space to actually sort of work it. Okay, and you know, and you, you watch that guy pass guard, he's absolutely phenomenal. You know, and this is kind of the same idea, it's like a pressure and release kind of thing. So I've been into here, yeah, it's not happening. I reach underneath, go to du double underpass here, I'll just spin around here so you can see. Right, so I've got my knees in. So what I do from here, I take one, one leg away a little bit. Okay? Most people start to try and put that hook underneath my leg. Okay? If you can get this position here, you can grab hold of my sleeve. Yeah, and all he needs to do, rolls onto his side, extends this leg. Exactly, and I'm swept. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bait him into thinking that he's got a sweep. Okay? So again, so I've gone through all this, I've lifted him up, I jump my knees in. I move this back a little bit here, he straight away goes for the hook, as he does that, pop his leg down, smack him in the face, sorry, and jump over. <laughs> okay. This is what I copied directly, um, again from my buddy Leo, he, um, who used this, um, I think in the finals of the Pan Ams, when he at a like, brown belt level, against a big guy, just so giving the guy a bit of pressure, as soon as he lets go, the guy starts to straighten his legs, they open it straight over the side. Big gold medal, thank you. Okay, because again, I'm trying to sort of screw with his brain a little bit. So I've got this position here. I just move my leg back a little bit. And all I'm doing from here, I'm pushing this down. This way, right? I'm not messing about trying to step over it or anything like that. I'm just jumping. Okay? And in reality, I'm going to try and nail him. Right, sort of in the solar plexus, I'll come up with my shoulder. For training purposes, I'll do it a little bit more gentle, but I'm just jumping over it as I push it. And just coming straight through here. Now, again, just considering what we were saying about how I don't particularly like regular side control, when I hit this position here, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to get back into position here where I've rebound his hips, and it takes me straight back into what we we're just doing there. Hook this, reach underneath. Come around, seat belt, back to where I was. Okay? So there's quite a lot in there, so we just, just wanted to sort of just break it down and work through it just a bit at a time. But even, even now, even though the guy is like at our gym, now I'm going to do this, I pretty much still use this like every week. Okay? There's just certain things that just seem to work for me just over and over. So I've been in Tony's power position. Okay? He's giving me some pressure here. I take this leg off, double underhook with the legs, lift his hips up, 
jump in. It's important that I do this. Move away a little bit as I'm going to look to pass. Let him get a hook. Stuff this straight down so it's flat. Just going to leap straight over. Continue driving forward this way. I'm going to start again, putting some pressure on his hips. Driving my knee through, putting some pressure on his hips. Clear the arm. So I can start working around to take his back. Make sense? We'll see. Now, when I went to do um, to go to take the head, I made sure that this arm was clear. Okay, so it might even be that I sort of reach underneath here to start taking the head. What I've noticed some of you are doing, you're kind of getting caught by this arm. So this arm's here. So you're reaching sort of between the arm and the head, and you're coming around this way. Okay. Well, I, mean, I don't particularly like this as much, but let's be honest with you. I don't like this as much, but it's not a problem, okay? It just puts me like on a different path. So from here, if the guy in the toilet if he insists on keeping that arm out, so I can't reach over and get that, yeah, then I might have to sort of come through. So I'm into here. So I'm just gonna work around nice and high, okay? And I'm just keeping this arm underneath my arm. What I'm going to do from here, I'm just going to pop up onto my knees, here, I'm just going to start to sit back. Now, I don't need to go like classic sort of legs over position for the arm bar or whatever, okay? I can either keep it under my arm, or I can bring this out, Now again I've just got an arm bar. I'm isolating this shoulder, which is the fixed point here, I'm putting the fulcrum point, leverage underneath his elbow, and I'm loading his wrist. That's what I need to make pressure, to make the leverage, okay? Doesn't feel overly tight, Carl just goes to sit up and escape. <laughs> no way. Okay, and that's simply just by closing this together. I don't need legs over his head. I don't need to do that. If I specifically want to, I can. Okay? I just put a leg over. There's the armbar. Put the leg over. There's the armbar. Don't put any legs over. There's the armbar. As long as I'm closing my legs together, Clamping into here, then I'm making the proper leverage to finish this off. And like I say, the guy can try and explode a bit, he can try and stand up as fast as he wants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you find that you're getting that arm caught and it's stopping you from getting a good bone and arrow bone, just switch to the arm bar instead. Okay, you can do it regular way that way. Oh, I'm just doing this other way without so I'm not using my hands. So I've got to position here, yeah, and I'm just sort of sitting into here. Oh, it's changed, it's changed his arm. It's okay. So I'll have to take it this way. But if I don't want to go there, I can take it under this arm. So again, from here, I'm not even using my hands. Okay? I get into here, I hold this. Right, <laughs> <laughs> really position, and you still get the arm back. I've got my hands free, like I say, for just in case I need to. I might just start reaching across, taking a choke off it instead. Whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. Okay, so you can do just by having the arm trapped under your own arm pick, or you can do it classic way here. Just quickly have a few reps of that, take the arm bar, and then we'll move on. I'm going to get passing guard, but I think it was until I was like a brown belt or something. And um, I remember just specifically just drilling it over and over and over because I'd been totally anal about passing guard. Every person I could find it was like, show me this, show me that. And the problem has been always, I was trying to do too much at once, okay? I was trying to sort of pass both legs and get to a control position, and against the better guys, I couldn't do it. As soon as I sort of went to pass, I can get round all of a sudden the regard, and I'm back to where I started. I mean, like Helen, uh, were a nightmare for that. I mean, a really good, quick, flexible guard, okay? So it kind of occurred to me that if you can kill one leg, then I'm only passing the other leg. And this is like a classic example. Yeah, if uh, again, I'll use Russ. If we're in a position here where he's got like sort of both his legs and I'm like trying to sort of fight his legs, it becomes difficult for me to actually sort of try and get anywhere. Yeah? And if I do and if I do get round, trying to sort of pass both his legs, I want to try and come sort of right round here, so as soon as I let go, he's starting to come back to try and put me back in guard again. So it becomes a nightmare. Much easier is passing one leg. So that's what we're looking at here. So I trap that one. That leg's not going anywhere now, so I've only got one to worry about. Okay, and you'll see like as we do more and more today, you'll see how that sort of becomes like a recurring theme. Um, like from a sort of standing position here, 
Yeah, again, I'm looking to try and cross both legs. It's awkward. So I'll just basically step one leg away so it can't follow me and then sit on it. Now, this leg's out of the way and I concentrate on passing this one. This one's no good anymore. I drop this through here, everybody starts to think, shit, it's a triangle. Okay, but there isn't. It's a gap pass. That's because I've trapped off that leg. I haven't been triangled yet doing that. Okay, it's serving well. So when you're thinking about passing guard, kind of like slow it down and try and trap one leg and then just pass the other one. Okay, even if it doesn't particularly make a lot of sense now, the more you think about it and the more you train, you'll find that for me, that was the best way. Okay, so go back to this position here. I'm into here, I'm trapped off. Right, I'm trying to sort of move around. I know Russ is going to start sort of blocking me. I don't want to waste a lot of energy. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make it easier for myself. Everything's locked in place. I'm just going to pass this one leg. What I'm going to do from here, make sure I have a good grip on his gi. A little bit of forward pressure. I'm going to take gi pants. And I'm simply going to take it from one side of my head to the other. So now I'm making my job so much easier. This hand here is now going to re-pummel. And it's going to take the place of this hand that's gripping. So now this locks everything down. So he's in a position now, what we call a rewind the hips. His bottom leg is trapped. His top leg now is stuck. I'm controlling his <coughs> hips with my body. And I've got this hand here locking down against his leg. So now if Russ wants to go move somewhere, it's a lot more difficult for him to move. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this hand, I'm going to start to reach around his head. Now me personally, I don't like sort of classic side control. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to try and put him on his back. Yeah, I'm going to start to reach around here. So I'm getting my chest against the back of his shoulder. I've got my knee against his back, so he can't easily roll in. Yeah, so I've got this control here. So I know if anything, he's just going to roll away. So under goes to roll away. I get my over under position here, my seat belt grip. And before he goes any further, I'm going to sit into him and I'm going to bring him back. So straight away now, I'm pretty much taking his back. Yeah, from here, whichever finish you like, but there's a whole bunch of stuff in there you can do. Okay, the finish is not the important bit, it's getting there that's the important bit. So we start like from this reference position here. Okay, get myself a gear grip, so he's getting some pressure. I'm going to take the leg from this side of my head to the other side. I'm going to take this hand through, I'm going to start pushing this down, not just with my hand, I don't want it to be a strength thing, I get my chest on his hip as well. I switch grips, so his legs are now well and truly stuck. Okay, I'm going to start reaching his hand around, so I'm going to anchor his head. But only when I anchor his head and keep his elbow down do I start to pass. From there, I'm going to drive him into the position that I want him in. I get my grip, I take my right leg, and I sit under him, and I bring him back. At this point, I don't even need hooks in. He still thinks he's got a chance of escaping. So just switch, switch, <coughs> and bow down. <coughs> don't need hooks. I don't need any back control than this. Yeah? If I take his neck, it doesn't matter if my foot's there or if it's there. I've got his neck. Okay? I don't try and choke him, and he goes, no, no, it's not coming on, wait a minute, is that any better? Oh, yeah, 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 that's it. Okay, <coughs> I've got his neck, it's relevant what that foot's doing. Make sense? Give it a go. Put my hips up, make it difficult for him. Pop, straight back into here. Now all I'm going to do from here, classic, just drop my knee straight across so I'm inside. Okay? So I'm into this position here. What this does is gives me options of which way to go. As long as I keep control of this leg, right? So my, my toes are on the mat and my knee is on the mat as well, okay? So he can't easily kick through to get half guard. He can't easily pull his leg back up to reclaim like full guard or whatever. So the good thing about this, right, is I can go either way. I can spin here, go and pass this way. I can control his head. 
can hook his leg. So I'll do him like this pass with both feet. He'll come through this way. I can bring the opposite leg through. So I'm going double knee to and pass. Okay, there's lots of different stuff. So I want you to just have five minutes. Like I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like, teach any of this because I'm sure you all know it already. But we've got this position here. So my first control, just by putting my knee through. And then depending on what my partner does, determines which way I go. I can start to come round this way. I can change my mind. And I can come back through this way here. I can go this way, starts to block me off. I start to come round this way instead. Yeah, there's just loads of different things you can do from that position. It's really, really basic, but it's really important. If you can't do that to start with, the rest of the stuff's not going to work. So just have a few minutes each, running through these passes that you know. I know Fish has been covering some of these as well recently with the Balkan guys and that. Just quickly, run through some of these, and we'll get back onto the bit that I actually want to show you. As I stand here, right, all I'm going to do, I'm going to drop my hand down, so his arm goes to the floor. I'm going to take my foot, I'm going to step on his bicep, and keep your grip. I'm going to strip my grip out. Now from here, right, I don't want to be going same side. I'll switch my grip here, I reach underneath, pop into here, and I'm straight away back to where we were. So the only difference is, I'm actually stepping on his hand instead. Again, same idea, no gi, I'm into here, he just grabs my wrist instead. Yeah? MMA, I'm trying to punch the guy. You don't want me to, you've got the wrist control here. Exactly the same. Step, hand in, step, pull this out, give him a dig, and back round. Exactly the same move to break that grip. Don't try and fight it where you are. Stand up, step on his arm. Perfectly legal in competition. Okay? Let's do that as well.